welcome of course to this update and it is going to be brief now i know i say that a lot but this one is going to be brief now about an hour after i finished recording this morning's video of course uh, pfizer BioNTech decided to make one of the major announcements of the pandemic now you probably heard this on mainstream media quite a bit already they have been talking about it quite a lot this afternoon but all that information, as far as I can see, comes from one single publication, and it's here. This is from the uh, Pfizer BioNTech site. So this is what we know. There's some brief details on the top there, and there's not a huge amount of text, and quite a lot of that's about the, uh, about the company. So this is actually all we have at the moment to go on. And of course, I've, I'll give you the reference for that, so you can uh, check on that for yourself. Everything the mainstream media gets is, is from this site at the moment. Uh, but we'll add a bit of background as well. Now, there's 47 vaccines in human trials. Now, the first thing to say, I think, is because this vaccine has worked, it's a spike protein vaccine, because this has worked, it means that the principle of vaccination is possible. And I expect many other vaccines also to be efficacious. So, for example, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine should be out or publishing pretty soon. The Moderna vaccine should be publishing pretty soon. Um, I expect Pfizer and BioNTech are really pleased with themselves. They've pipped the rest by perhaps only a few days, so certainly more, not more than a few weeks. So there will be more out soon and uh, more results out soon. Now, of course, we don't know whether they're going to work or not because we've got data for this one. But the, uh, the, the, the prognostications in previous weeks and months have indicated they could be as effective. But this is a remarkably important proof of principle. Vaccines can be efficacious against SARS coronavirus too. Now, yesterday I couldn't have said that. I could have guessed it, but today I can actually say it. Well, I can pretty well say it. I mean, this is, this is a good quality report. I have read it all. Uh, it's a good quality report, uh, not peer reviewed, of course, yet in the academic sense, but it has been checked by an independent body. So it's not just it's not just Pfizer BioNTech trying to bump up their share price a bit, although I'm sure it has managed to do that as well. So that, that's the report. Um, vaccine candidate COVID-19 achieved success in first interim analysis from phase three study. Now, as you probably know, phase three studies are um, placebo. So you give you give half or you give a, a control, you give the experimental group the vaccine, you give the other half a placebo and you compare the two groups. You do not deliberately infect people. This is just naturally acquired COVID-19 SARS coronavirus 2 infection. Although you do follow them up closely, of course. So it's a messenger RNA base. Now, this is going to be the first time, this is the first M RNA ribonucleic acid vaccine ever. We have discussed this in some detail in the past. Briefly, you uh, give some RNA, that is the genetic code for the spike protein. You inject that normally into the muscle of the arm. The, uh, the RNA goes into some muscle cells around about, but mostly it goes into some specialised immune cells called antigen presenting cells. Uh, they then take this RNA and they make some of the spike protein or, or what is an analogue for the spike protein, present that to the immune system and the immune system learns to recognise that as the virus itself, as the spike protein of the virus itself, which of course is the infectious part. So previous videos on that, if you want more detail, but that's basically how that is working. Never done before. You know, to be quite honest, I was a bit reticent about this. I, I prefer to go for the tried and trusted method. But this is a brand new method and um, the, the, the result is remarkably encouraging today. And I'm sure this is going to be the first of many RNA vaccines applicable not just for infectious diseases, but other things like cancers as well. So... Um, a very important proof of principle of of this medical technology, as long as it's supported by the peer reviewed publications, of course, which it looks like it looks like it's going to be. Um, first interim uh, efficacy is it efficacy is is it working? The answer seems to be yes, it is. Uh, four four forty three thousand uh, participants. Now they're still recruiting more, so there's more to come. So 43,000 patients, half had the vaccine, half had the placebo in six countries. So this is big, this is big stuff. So you've got, what, 21, 22,000 people in each group here. 
42% uh, were from diverse backgrounds. So these are not all young, fit people of one particular ethnicity. They are from different countries, different ethnicities, different ages, different levels of comorbidities. Now what has happened is, so far, out of this group, this whacking great huge group here, 43,000 group, so far, 94 of these people, so 94 out of that lot, has caught the virus. Now, that when the people went into the trial, they were told to carry on sort of protecting themselves as normal. But as you would expect in the pandemic, 94 have caught it. And they were mostly in the placebo group. And given that the, uh, the, the given that Pfizer BioNTech have said this is 90% effective, it's reasonable to assume that 90% of those infections were in the placebo group and only 10% were in the group that received the vaccines. Now, 90% vaccine efficacy is, is incredibly high. Most of the vaccines we use aren't anything like that high. Influenza vaccine might only be 60%, 50%, 70%, depends on the year. But 90% is, is, is staggeringly effective. You inject 100 people with a vaccine and 90 of them become immune. As far as vaccines go, this is impressive stuff. This is impressive very high rates and we believe that the amount of herd immunity required to eradicate the SARS coronavirus 2 infection is probably around about 70 percent so you can see if we have good vaccine uptake we're way over that so this is encouraging um no serious safety concerns have been observed i mean wow you know they don't say some they're actually saying this no, no, none have been observed so far now, we know with other vaccines, some have been observed, although they're believed not to be significant. So it looks like other vaccines are coming out to be safe as well. But that's the data on that one. It looks like it's safe. Now, this is not telling us about the side effect profile. When you have a vaccination, it's often to get a normal to get a sore arm. You can feel a bit ill for a few days. How sore your arm is, how ill you are for a few days. Not really. Well, not discussed in this in this paper. But the key thing is it's safe. Um, again, uh, for a brand new vaccine, brand new technology, impressive, impressive stuff, actually. Um, <clears throat> safety and additional data continue to be collected. The trial goes on. This is just an interim report. Now, I forget the number of people. I, I think we're kind of halfway now. So the, 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 they want to, I think they want to carry on to 160. Where am I? <laughs> they want 160 people, I think it is. Uh, to be uh, infected so but they're, they're well on the way there as you can see from that uh, only, only then will they say the trial is uh, that the phase three trial is completed now downside we understand that this vaccine has to be stored at min minus 18 degrees centigrade so minus 18 degrees centigrade now from memory 32 degrees uh, fahrenheit is is not degrees uh, centigrade so um, this is this is a way 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 sub-zero temperatures so bit of a faff with a cold chain um, to be fair um, all vaccines have a cold chain um, I was on a vaccination program in, in, in the tropics years ago and the, to ensure the cold chain was a real hassle in fact it's, it's, it's the, it was the most difficult part really M maintaining them the, the vaccine it has to be cold all the way from the manufacturer uh, this vaccine we were using um, only had to be at five degrees centigrade or less but all the way from the manufacturer all the way to the end use um, so this is normal with vaccines but a cold chain of minus 18 degrees centigrade is more hassle you need fairly sophisticated refrigeration equipment to keep it that cool but certainly within sophisticated countries like the UK and the United States that's not a major problem um, we know it's more than 90 percent effective seriously impressive now, this is based on seven days after the second dose. So it's two doses and uh, it's three, the, the doses seem to be three weeks apart. So um, seven days after the second dose. Now, seven days, of course, is no time at all. Uh, these patients need to be followed up for months. And how long is this going to last is an interesting question. Now, my hunch here, and it is just a hunch, is probably many, many years, I believe this will 
this immunity will last for. And I'm basing that on the fact that people who contracted SARS coronavirus 1, severe acute respiratory syndrome virus type 1 back in 2003, still have memory T cells now, so are still immune and also have cross immunity to SARS coronavirus 2. So based on the SARS coronavirus 1 knowledge that we have, uh, I'm, I'm actually pretty optimistic about this. Don't know, data's not there yet. They are following this up. Um, in participants without evidence of prior... So, so in other words, these people had no previous infections. They had no natural immunity. And they are also studying whether this is going to be efficacious in people who've already had the infection. But these people were naive to... to uh, so they were naive to the virus. There we go, a bit sideways. They, they, they hadn't been exposed to the virus before. So um, people who had not been exposed, given the vaccine, generated immunity. Excellent. Exactly what you would want. I mean, given the chance, would you like to be sick and, and run the risk of the severe complications or the long COVID that can occur from this? Or would you rather have a vaccine, get immunity without being sick? Pretty short debate for most of us, I would think. Um, right, US approval. Um, Submission for emergency use authorization in the USA is going to be made uh, basically this month. Uh, FDA, third week of November, right? So that should be going in in the third week of November. So, um, well, basically pretty soon, isn't it? Um, can't remember the date now, but uh, anyway, is it, is it the 8th or the 9th? The 8th today, I think. So So within the next week or two... Um, the, the approval will be going in. UK, likewise, um, apply for UK approval at the end of this month, pretty well at the same time. Uh, could be granted in early December. Don't know how long the American procedures take. I think this one can be pretty quick. So basically, this could be authorised for use early December in the United States and the United Kingdom. And by that time, you know, I suspect the other vaccines will be reporting. I think we're going to end up with three or four vaccines all at the same time, which, of course, is absolutely brilliant. Now, the UK has pre-ordered 40 million. Uh, that's enough for 20 million people. I'm not sure how many the US has ordered, actually. I know it's a lot. And I know the US paid for a big chunk of the, uh, a big chunk of the development costs. Um, the US government put... A lot of money into this. I can't remember how much it was now, but it did put quite a bit of money into it. So uh, the US government over the past year has been very proactive in supporting vaccine programs. Indeed, I would go further. Uh, I would say without the support of the US government in 2020, um, we would not be where we are now because they have just pumped such a lot of cash into this. And uh, the money's not everything, but, but it, it helps. So good decisions have been made uh, by the uh, American government over the past um, well in 2020 in, in respect of the, the vaccine we could argue about the other bits but this is a video for good news clinical trials oh there we go 164 have to be confirmed I thought it was 160 so they will carry on and what we would expect from this is about 90% of those 90% of the infections will be in the placebo group maybe 10% or hopefully less than 10% of these infections will be in the uh, the experimental group or actually get the vaccine. We would expect those kind of results. Now, more information, uh, Independent Data Monitoring Committee. Um, so these, these results here that I've showed you here, um, this is all we've got at, at the moment. Uh, this has been reviewed. Remember, all the mainstream media all whatever they say as far as I can see all their information is just coming from here but I'll just go to the bottom so you can see it's not a massive document and it's certainly not written as a peer-reviewed paper but that is that is all we've got but that paper was enough to uh, bunk the stock market up by about five percent in the UK and I, I guess in the US um, and, and the optimism I feel is, ju is justified um, so it is I wouldn't kind of call, I wouldn't quite call this peer review, but it's not it's not far off it. Independent Data Monitoring Committee. So the, these are scientists and doctors and 
vaccine experts from around the world who have reviewed it and say, yeah, OK, th th this sounds reasonable. Protection is achieved within 28 days after the initial dose of the vaccine. So given that, um, that they were testing these seven days after the second dose, they must be three weeks apart. Uh, the company expects to produce 50 million vaccine doses this year and 1.3 billion doses in 2021. But by that time, I expect many other vaccines will be doing the same thing. I think there's going to be a choice of several vaccines by early 2021, probably four or five. Um, and this is good because as we roll the vaccine programmes out, we'll learn what vaccine is best for what age group, potentially for what ethnicity, potentially for people with heart disease. We'll learn the vaccine that's best for people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or, or diabetes or obesity you know we'll learn more as we go along and we can we can make the uh, prescribed vaccine more specific as time goes on um what's that plan to submit full data oh yeah so they're going to submit it all for full peer review when they've got the 164 so that's going to take another some time um, but as we know, the emergent the, the, the data here is probably good enough. I strongly suspect for the emergency approval in the US and the UK in November. Now I might be wrong. The FDA might say no. Get your 164 cases first, mate. They might do. Uh, the, the vaccine authorities in my country might say no. You haven't proved this enough. Um, they may do, but I don't. I don't think they're going to do that. We will know in a few weeks' time, but I'd be surprised if they uh, if they didn't do this, especially with the safety profile being so far so good. Of course, they need followed up longer term. You know, there's not a lot of certainty until there's certainty. Um, unknowns. Does this prevent asymptomatic viral shedding? Uh, don't know. We don't know that one. Um, what we know is that it stops 90% of people getting sick. That's all we know. But from the phase two and the phase one data, where we know this produces neutralizing antibodies, where we know this produces um, memory T cells. So the memory T cells, if, if virus is reproducing inside a cell, the memory T cell uh, will come along, the memory cytotoxic T cell, and it will just destroy that cell with all the viral particles inside it. So given that it will destroy virally infected cells at an early stage, it would seem logical to me that there's not going to be many viruses in the respiratory mucosa to be coughed out to spread the infection. That's just theory. We, we, we don't know that yet. This is why we do the clinical trials, so that we know and we're not guessing. Time span of immunity, we don't know. Although I suspect it's going to be quite long lived. I, I'm hoping it's going to be greater than 10 years. But we have no idea. I'm basing that purely on the SARS coronavirus one data. The argument against that, indicating that its immunity may be short lived, is the very short term immunity that we get when we're exposed to the common cold, four types of coronaviruses that are knocking around in the environment all the time anyway. They produce a very poor immune response. But SARS coronavirus 1, and as far as I know, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, also produce longer term immunity. So I'm hopeful. Uh, routine side effect profile we don't is not mentioned. Um, we, we don't know that yet. Um, now, the other good thing about this RNA vaccine is it's possible to massively, massively increase production uh, way more so than with previous vaccine technologies at relatively short notice, as we saw by the huge numbers that are going to be produced. Now, this vaccine is not going to get us out of the second wave that we're in now. This vaccine is not going to reduce the hospital crisis we could be facing in late November, early December. This vaccine is not going to reduce the death rate we are fearing in late November, early December. What's going to do that is hands, face, space ventilation that people still aren't getting right and isolation 
hands, face, space, ventilation, isolation. People that are may have been exposed to the virus need to be isolated, uh, need to isolate themselves for 14 days. And as we looked at this morning, uh, only about 50% of people who are diagnosed with a virus in the UK currently end up isolating for one reason or another. That has to massively improve as we have a high index of suspicion for the infection. And if we are diagnosed with the infection or think we have the infection based on the COVID symptom tracker app, we must self-isolate unless we test negative with a good quality test. Okay, that's a brief one. Um, what, what this means is the other vaccines are probably going to work. Are they going to be 90%? Don't know. Have they got the potential to be 90% based on the science we now know? Yeah, they have. People should be getting vaccinated before Christmas, we would now hope. Mass vaccination next spring. And the implications for that in terms of herd immunity by next summertime are potentially, potentially huge. So that's why there's all this excitement. There are these unknowns. We won't know definitely for a bit more time yet. We do need the definitive peer-reviewed publication data. But I would be very surprised if the regulatory authorities and the UK in the, in the UK and the United States do not um, uh, pr promote this application, support this application. And I suspect that people will be getting vaccinated in December. So that's the most definitive we've been. Okay, thank you for watching as always. I am encouraged.